Hey everybody, Jeff Miller here, head of GMAT instruction at Target Test Prep. In today's video, we are gonna do a GMAT quantitative section breakdown and talk about how to tackle problem solving questions. So let's get started. All right, let's start by talking about the GMAT quant breakdown. You've got 21 quant questions. You've got 45 minutes. Now remember, GMAT Focus has made some changes. If you're used to the classic GMAT, you may now know data sufficiency, not a part of the quant section. Geometry more or less is gone. We'll talk about that shortly, but you're talking about really just problem solving questions. As we said, 21 questions, 45 minutes, about two minutes per question, a little bit more. And remember, you have the option to go back and change three answer choices. What is on the quant section? Well, things like linear and quadratic equations, number properties, tons of word problems, general word problems, rates, work, ratios, percents, sets, stats, a ton of different stuff, combos and permutations, probability, and there's still even some coordinate geometry tested. So there is a ton of topics tested in the GMAT quant section. And as we said, only 21 questions. So there's a lot you need to learn and not a lot is tested on any one given exam. So we'll talk about how to prep for that in a moment. But I want to address geometry. It's a question that students are always asking about. Is there or is there not geometry on GMAT Focus? Well, here's what we know. Basic, basic geometry is tested. It can be tested in DI, can be tested on the quant section. If it's there, you will be given the formula that you need in the stem of a question. So if it's about the area of a square, you'll know that the area is side squared. If it's about the perimeter of a rectangle, you'll know that perimeter is equal to two length plus two width. That will always be provided for you because there's still some things that the GMAT would like to test from a geometry perspective because it opens up the amount of things they can test. Now, we've talked about what's on the GMAT quant section, how long it takes, what you have per question. How about how do I learn all this stuff? Well, you've watched many of my videos before, I hope. And if so, what do I always talk about? Topical learning, topical practice. Why? Because every section has so much in it, right? Take any section you want, linear and quadratic equations, for example. You need to know stuff like factoring, foiling quadratics, even the quadratic formula, Vietas formula, um, the discriminant, difference of squares, quadratic identities, factor by grouping. All of that stuff, even though you might get one, maybe two questions on that on any given GMAT, but it doesn't matter. You have to be prepared for all of that to show up. So you need to learn it topically. You learn all you can about quadratic equations, just like we discussed a second ago, all of those topics. You take notes, you make flashcards, you get it all down, and then you practice like heck. 50 to 100 questions just on that topic. You see where there's weaknesses, you see where there's gaps, and then you fill them in and then you rinse and repeat with the following math topics. That is how I want you, and we tell all of the target test prep students to learn GMAT math. It doesn't mean you won't do mixed problem sets at certain points. It doesn't mean you won't do practice tests, but it means that when you're in the moment learning a topic, that's how you do it. But remember, just because you learned something week two, by the time you get to week 12, it doesn't mean it's still gonna be right here unless you're doing review. That means looking through flashcards every week, looking through your notes every week if you prefer that over flashcards, going through your error logs, seeing the things you've gotten wrong in the past and making sure you don't get them wrong again. If you can study in that way, you can learn what you need for GMAT Quant and you can be super successful learning it and then also applying it on the actual GMAT. So to recap, the breakdown on GMAT Quant is 21 questions, 45 minutes, just problem solving questions, and a ton of topics, about 20 major topics. I listed most of them, but not all of them previously. And a great way to learn it is topical learning and practice. You do that, you can be masterful in GMAT Quant, you can crush GMAT Quant, so I'm confident you can do it. Watch, take, take advantage of everything we talked about in today's video, and even look at past videos for more GMAT Quant tips that we've told you. If you can do all that, like I said, you'll crush GMAT quant. All right, I had a blast talking about the GMAT quantitative breakdown and also giving some really poignant GMAT quant study tips. I hope you learned a lot in today's video. 
and we have tons more of these, check out our channel, subscribe to our channel, and leave comments. I'm happy to do videos on anything that's going to help you succeed in your GMAT prep. Thank you for watching. Happy studying, and we will all talk soon.